Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new episode of Flesh Wound Farce, where we discuss and review your and our favorite comedy films. This is the world's first and only combination trivia host and professional wrestling announcer of Chilean descent that currently resides in Southern California, Ozzy V. As you can see by the name, of course, on the side over here. And with me as always, first in the Northern Bay Area, he is world famous juggler, not Raiders suck, but Greg Larson. Hello, That's, Greg. Well, Raiders do suck, but hello, Ozzy. How's it going? <laughs> it's good. Um, can you just answer a quick question for me? Last year, who had the better record? I don't know. I don't yeah, know. exactly. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Next, <laughs> flesh wound producer Todd Chilling, nine times out of ten. Yeah, chilling today. I would I'm surprised you're chilling today because you threw together this new format that's thrown people off. They don't know what's going on with this. They're used to me in a different spot. They're used to you in a different spot. They're used to Greg in a different spot. Or they're not used to these names over all over the place. But hey, well, it's uh it's it's an adjustment and we'll get used to it. Yeah, I know. Speaking of which, because I can throw stuff on the screen. I'm going to show you something you guys don't even know about yet. But oh, man. No, no, no. Here we go. Oh, now, no. Now available in the Flesh Moon Features Holy store. shit. Hey. You can I even need to get, get one in, of those. You can even get it in purple, Ozzy, if you... I don't know. But, yeah. You know what? Actually, the Ozzy edition would have to be silver and black. Well, there's silver, so... Nah. Uh, All right. right. Yeah. So yeah, I got to share it live on the air. I'm gonna That's yeah, awesome. Okay. And where can where can those now for those listening, the audio version, wherever you enjoy your podcasts, Todd just showed us a clip of a flesh wound farce t shirt. So if you want a t shirt, Todd, where can they go to get a t shirt? Very easy. Go to fleshwoundfeatures.com, click on the t shirt link, and there you go. Fleshwoundfeatures.com t shirt link. And there you go. How much are they selling for right now? Uh $19.99. Nineteen ninety nine plus shipping and handling, I presume. Yes. Okay. Are these true sizes, or, do, or are they pre shrunken, or what's the deal with that? Um, there, there's actually a couple different options. Pugs has already got a couple. Okay. Um, there's a comfort tee, which is a little bit more expensive that I it, I haven't tried yet, so I can't tell you. Uh, but we also have hoodies. We have we have hoodies, t shirts. I haven't made a girl shirt for Farsh yet. Sorry. <laughs> We're going to have so many, so many complaints. <sighs> but hey, they're coming soon. Yeah. All right. Now, this isn't a podcast about apparel. This is a podcast about comedies, funny movies, hilarious movies. This week, we reviewed the 1995 Martin, 1999 Martin Lawrence film Blue Streak. Right now, we'll give you a peek at the trailer. Todd, if you'd please do the honors. Uh, he planned the heist. Come here, gorgeous. He stole the rock. Good doggy, it was the nearest exit. And he hid it in a safe place. Get your hands up! You're under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. Two years later. I'm free! Damn! When I left, you was like, flippity cat cacao. Now you like problem. His hiding place <laughs> is not what it used to be. You're is this really a police police. station? Of course. You <laughs> now <laughs> to get back to his rock. Pizza delivery for robbery, homicide. There's two kinds of people that get through that door. People wearing handcuffs, people wearing a badge. He'll need the ultimate disguise. <laughs> I'm a detective. <laughs> I know the real reason that you're here. Excuse me? You're the new lead detective. Me? We're gonna be partners and this thing's like a marriage. No, this is nothing like a marriage. It's more like a one night stand. Wham, bam, thank you officer. He's keeping the peace. Put your hands on the pavement. Miles, Tully. Yeah. Protecting the innocent. You don't get that kind of training at the academy. Believe that. And taking the law. I'm a cop. Damn. 
into his own hands. If my client gets so much as a scratch on him while he's in your custody... You can't touch me. Ow! Detective! Hey! 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 If he walks like it... How'd you get so good? <laughs> if he talks like it... You might want to buckle up. He's gotta be his internal affairs. I don't know, he's FBI. I'm an officer of the law. <laughs> Full of it. Just who the hell are you working for? I'm a federale. A federale? Martin Lawrence. <laughs> Tango El Gato Los Panalones. Blue Streak. You just told those men you got a, a big cat in your pants. Oh. All right, that was the trailer for Blue Streak. And funny story about this is I was just flipping through channels. And I came across it while on HBO, and it is available on HBO Max if you wanted to check this out. And I remember seeing this movie in the theater because it was rated PG-13, and it was I, my freshman or sophomore year from high school. So that was it was one of those movies I went to go see with my friends. And I was oh, I was a huge fan of Martin the Martin TV show, and I think this was the first movie comedy that featured him in a starring role at all i i couldn't remember any any movie that came out before this one so i was actually oddly excited for it and i remember enjoying it in high school and i initially I did initial thoughts here i uh i enjoyed it. it wasn't you know great but it wasn't bad by any means greg initial thoughts yeah this is one that i remember seeing the trailer for um never saw and so it was definitely fun to check out. Um, uh, you know, it was uh, not quite as funny as I expected, but it was a fun movie. And I'm excited to talk a little bit more about it, but I definitely had a few laughs and definitely enjoyed the whole thing. Todd. All right. Well, I also saw it theatrically. Uh, maybe not as excited. Because this is after Bad Boy, so he may have... was after... No, I mean, okay. I'm sorry. Bad Boy's to <laughs> that me... That small like movie he movie. did. Hold on a second. <laughs> Bad Boy's to me seemed more like an action movie than a comedy movie. Are you want me to give you a comedy then? He was House Party, so he was Belial. He was the third lead. Uh, okay. okay. Third lead? Well, Kid and Play count as one, so he's the second lead. <laughs> All right. But what I've... It kind of felt... the. The plot itself, it, like this movie could have been released in the 80s, and I think it would have done better if it was released in the 80s because it kind of had that simple, silly plot that it kind of like armed and dangerous. You know, like it just it 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 also was sort of a hybrid. You had some action in it more than your standard comedy. I'd say 35 percent of the I, movie was action. I, I actually thought it was a high because I know when this brought was brought up, I was like, well, isn't that more action movie? I think the comedy outweighs it because I was thinking more something like Beverly Hills Cop, which is more even than this. This right. one is yes. definitely comedy heavy, especially with the uh, the whole situation being the diamond in the police station. And then he pretends to be a cop and especially him, you know, dressing in his disguise. Uh was great to see delivering the pizza yeah. as well uh we did also in, in addition to martin lawrence film also stars luke wilson and also features dave chappelle and this was released 1999 around the same time a half baked but still not a major star at the time because i think this might have come out before uh, earlier in the year before half baked had come out uh but just jumping into my favorite scene is seeing the two of them in the liquor store. <laughs> I mean, here, this uh, this was released 1999. We're over 20 years old, so the whole spoiler thing doesn't really apply. And we've talked about it before. When it comes to comedies, right. you're watching it for these moments, and it's not the surprise. It was their reaction of, you see, Martin Lawrence, char Martin Lawrence characters, Logan, and Dave Chappelle's character, a Tully, meeting in a liquor store, as Tully was trying to rob it and Logan is already pretending to be the cop. It just, I kind of, I just really enjoyed the whole, that quirky aspect of, oh, it's in the police. He's got to pretend to be a cop. And then of course he runs into this guy while he's in the liquor store. And it, at that whole, the whole premise cracks me up. It's not just the screen. It's not just, you know, the word or any particular moments. 
the whole premise cracks me up, but specifically seeing the the interactions between Logan and Tully make crack me up the most. Greg? Yeah, that uh I loved every scene with Dave Chappelle, which is hard to not. Um, but my favorite line in the movie was Yo tengo el gato los pantalones. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the conviction he had when he said it was great. And I love that he walked into Mexico all confident and then got caught and was told like, hey, you do know that this is what this means, right? <laughs> Which, yeah. for those of you who don't know, means you just said you have a cat in your pants. <laughs> so, yeah, I had a good laugh at that one. And Todd. All right. I don't, I'll try to keep it as clean as I can, I guess. And we'll just read it. <laughs> um, it was a Dave Chappelle line, not 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 surprisingly, towards the end when we're uh, when they're captured and he's the you know the tough one. And he says, I'll rip your lips off, kiss them shit, kiss kiss my ass with them shits, rip your <laughs> tongue out, and lick my balls with it. I could not stop laughing. <laughs> It was I'll I'll rip your lips off, kiss my ass with those shits, and lick your rip your tongue out and lick my balls with that. See, fuck that time. right. Yeah. Ozzy. Oh, I see delivery. you were trying not to be vulgar. I get yeah. it now. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, you know. It's all right. People that are tuning in know where they're getting yeah. themselves. This is the show. tame show of the of the shows. <laughs> Fair point. Fair point. Uh so when it comes to the rating, I here's the thing is in terms of a enjoyment factor like in terms of actually like checking out as soon as the movie began i was totally because it started very action heavy very yeah. action heavy so it for me it kind of just sucked me in because i'm such a sucker for these just like back in the 80s these cheap action movies that could just start out with a huge action scene and just suck you in and that's how this movie sucked me in and you know it's funny because you think he's going to escape and not go to prison but he ends up going to prison you follow that two years later i mean again spoiler whatever because it happens in the first five minutes of the movie so uh it's fun to see that whole stuff to come together and again the whole premise makes me laugh so if i had to be objective i would give this a three out of five but if i had to rate it purely on my entertainment factor of the film I would have to give it a four out of five. So I'm not saying it was like a four out of five movie, but I had a four out of five good time. If that makes any sense. <laughs> right. No, a hundred percent sense because like I was going to do the same thing where like, if I was looking at it as a comedy, you know, I had some laughs. It wasn't ever like really laugh out loud moments. Um, there was a moment where he delivered pizza in this crazy outfit, but I was like, it's LA. I understand why nobody flinched. nobody's even um, exactly. Yeah. Um I bet but, they didn't uh, even have to tell the people they were filming. <laughs> no, no. It's like go. You're good. Um, but yeah, I I did I enjoyed it. You know, there was never a moment where I was like, oh, it's kind of boring. You know, I, I enjoyed the whole thing. So I have to agree with you. It's a solid four. No, so okay. So I said a four out of fun factor for my point, but I would rate right. it as a movie as a three. Oh, I'm the other way around. So like comedy wise, three, but fun factor enjoyment, it's a four. Okay, yeah. That's okay. So we are on along the same lines yeah. where I enjoyed it to that extent. But if it was really if we're looking at it objectively as like a movie, yeah, you know, it is it, that is what it is. Well, I'm going to split the difference, gentlemen. I'm going to uh -oh. say this is a three and a half. I did like oh! it. Oh! So I'm a fan of this one. It's been a long time since I've seen it, probably not since the DVD first came out. I did also see it theatrically. I know Ozzy said he did. Um, yeah, I, I forgot how much fun this one is. I think uh, it... I mean, it helps that it's it's got this hybrid action point to it, but Martin Lawrence just does... I, I think it feels at least that Martin Lawrence had a fun job, you know, making it. And it's almost like that. You felt that. I think it's funny. He recreated the poster. Not that long after. Runner, Re run, run it down the street with a gun. In the air. <laughs> <laughs> Fair, point. Fair point. I didn't, uh, 
I thought that was a badge actually in the air in the poster. Oh, maybe it is, but it's close enough. <laughs> uh, I see. Well, I can I can put it up full screen again and we can find out. That's it, a badge. It is a badge, but it's funnier if it's a gun. <laughs> Which is weird because he has another badge on his waist. Oh. He's double badging it. Oh, shit. That, you know what? I wonder if it was a gun and then they toned it down and put the badge yeah. in his hand. Or either that or Joss Whedon took over. <laughs> oh. Okay, real quick. No, seriously. So, I just great. Whatever story. I'm hosting trivia, right? There is a team that was called uh, Notting Hill. The Snyder Cut is what they call themselves, right? And then we get to the half, and they're like in first place. But then as we get to the end, they've like fallen like halfway down. They're like in sixth place. So as I'm announcing their score, I was like, hey, man, I don't mean to call you guys out, but you guys are called Notting Hill, the Snyder Cut. It really just feels like Joss Whedon took over for your team, and you guys took a no dive. <laughs> People were on board. Yeah. People were on there you board. go. Okay. That, that, great opportunity. That was like perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so next week is uh, n- Monday the 10th, which is one day after Mother's Day. So, usually, before we record, we discuss what film we're going to review next week so that we were prepared, but I forgot to mention that. Now, because I had a second thought. Yeah, last week we said, okay, yeah, for, for the day after Mother's Day, we'll play Mr. Mom, but then I thought about something. Is that there's yeah, which is can be scary sometimes. Is that there is actually a comedy out there that's more mother related that actually features people uh, who could actually be mothers? Okay, I thought you were gonna do M- Mrs. Doubtfire. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen it. Oh, so. the wait a second. You've no. never seen Mrs. Doubtfire? No. What? Holy <laughs> Okay, well we're no we know what we're doing two weeks from now. <laughs> two weeks from today, uh, we I'm, are doing um writing this down, uh Mrs. Doubtfire. I just want to see what kind of magic they do to get rid of that arm hair. <laughs> I can't believe you've never seen that movie. I, I think my age when that came out, I was probably like just out of high school or, or senior year. I wasn't trying to go watch Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah, but between now and then, I mean, if you look behind you, how many fucking movies, excuse my language, but how many movies do you have behind you? And, I mean, if it didn't star Robin Williams, I probably wouldn't be so, like, whatever. Right. But because he's, I mean, rest in peace, one of the greatest. There was no Popeye. <laughs> That's my favorite Robin Williams movie, so. Okay, well, whatever. I'm gonna. Be, I'm excited. I'm excited for that two weeks from now. But next week. So as I was leading into, that's funny that that slipped out there. But so we were gonna do. Well, uh, an option was Mr. Mom, starring Michael Keaton, or a newer film. Again, as I mentioned, featuring actresses that actually be mothers, and it's a film about becoming a mother. 2021. Anyone can be a mother. <laughs> Fair point. But that film is Baby Mama. So we're gonna do I've a live seen it. Okay. We're gonna do a live vote. So what do you guys think for Mr. Mom or Baby Mama? Well, if I'm, I'm voting, I'm going Mr. Mom. <laughs> well, yeah, because we've seen that. Well, uh, but I mean, I'm I'm normally pointing this out because looking at all the fil- films that we reviewed, how many have ha- featured uh starring actresses? You know what I mean? Everybody's been in more like a secondary role. You know, so Amy Poehler and Tina Fey are solid stars. Yeah, I I've never seen it. I, I've never seen it either. Great. But if you but if you make I me had pick, to just I'm look just... it up. <laughs> Excuse me. Say it again. I just looked it up because I had no clue what movie you were talking about. I'm pretty sure it came out the same day as Star Wars Force Awakens. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. That's why you don't remember hearing about it. So, in yeah. honor of Mother's Day, we'll be watching and reviewing the Tina Fey and Amy Poehler comedy, Baby Mama. Well, since we're, since we're like talking about stuff, we're going to be we're going to be doing a commentary watch along for Mother's Day. Not one that to watch on uh, the Aussie show. Right. <laughs> yes. Definitely the more of the horror nature. 
So, right. So you, so with, with this new program that we got set up, can we maybe do some commentary with some stuff? Yeah, we totally can. Okay. Um, well, keep, stay tuned for some of that stuff in the future. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there we go. Anything else you wanted to uh, talk about yeah, for yeah. Flesh Wound? Of course, you got the fleshwoundfeatures.com. They got the Patreon. Don't forget that you can get the t shirt. I'm literally buying a t shirt, right? I, oh, Greg's I already, already bought it. the t shirt. <laughs> Can't I'm, see it, but yeah. I'm buying the t shirt as soon as we're finished up here. So, however, we are recording in the future. So I may have the shirt before this <laughs> actually airs. So you can be like, I saw you at trivia wearing the shirt. What's the deal? My bad. So, but anyway, Todd, anything you wanted to let us know about Flesh Wound Horror or any of the other Flesh Wound shows? No, that, that's that's our big one coming up. I mean, you can go back and check out some of our other recent stuff. We talked Mortal Kombat. We talked. Uh, I can't. Yeah. You, I'm sure you guys did a Godzilla oh my God. wrong thing. If, if you haven't w- watched the Oscar show, you can go back. And oh, watch there's that. an Oscar show. Yeah. So we also did an Oscar watch along where we watched along and just dis- discussed. Yeah. It's not our normal fair for our normal, you know? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. fun once a year. All right. And of course that's flesh wound. That's flesh wound producer, Todd. <laughs> and that's world famous juggler, not Raiders suck, but Greg's Lars, Greg's Larson, <laughs> Greg's Larson, <laughs> Greg's Larson, Greg Larson. And I'm Ozzy V. And we'll see you next week right here for Flesh Wound Farce.